Hey, good morning, Saints. This is your friend and pastor, Roy, talking to you from the beautiful country of Romania and Apavia in particular. When I was back in the United States, I sensed a mandate from God and a, a particular direction. And that direction was to make absolutely perfectly clear scripturally how a person can know that they have eternal life. Well, you say, well, if a person has eternal life, don't they automatically <coughs> know that they have eternal life? And the answer to that is no. There are those who truly believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Many of them are Orthodox here in Romania. Absolutely no question about their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> Excuse me. Their devotion, no question about it. But if you ask them, you know, do you know that if you were to die, you'd go to heaven? The answer is generally, I, I hope so. Cred que da. Sperem. I hope so. I think so. Well, the Bible is absolutely clear as to whether or not you have eternal life. And uh, the mandate is to make it clear to the precious people of Romania how they can know. For example, uh, I uh, spoke to a woman, a very faithful church goer, and uh, uh, we would call her a pocaita, um, a woman who has repented in the Romanian language. And I asked her, I said, if you were to die, do you know you'd go to heaven? And she said, well, I hope so. Well, I had an opportunity to share with her, and this is what I shared with her. <clears throat> For God so loved the world, John 3, 16, that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him, two things happen. They will not perish, but they have everlasting life. Sanu piara chisa aiba viatsa veshnika. Absolutely clear. So my answer was, do you believe in Jesus Christ? She said, yes. I said, do you believe the Bible? She said, yes. Do you believe that Jesus is a liar? She said, no. Well, Jesus is speaking here. And Jesus said, whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. You believe in him. Then let me ask you a question. Not how you feel. But what the Bible says, what Jesus Christ says, whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Then, do you or do you not have everlasting life? Well, you could see her twist and mentally with that. And she says, well, I guess I do. She says, what do you mean guess? If Jesus says you have eternal life, do you or do you not? She said, well, if Jesus said so, I, I do. I said, well, this scripture spoken by the Lord Jesus Christ says, whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Well, we, we left it at that, and I hope it wasn't water off a duck's back. But there are sufficient scriptures to give us absolute assurance uh, whether or not we have eternal life. In fact, there was a group of people who believed <clears throat> Believed in the name of the Son of God. Absolutely. Uh, what does it mean to believe in Jesus Christ? That he suffered and died and he rose again from the dead. And he suffered and died for my sins and the sins of the world. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> it's absolutely clear. <clears throat> Excuse me again. And uh, it's in First John. Uh, chapter 5, verse 13. Well, I don't know what's happening to me, but uh, hold on there. I'll be back. <clears throat> John writing here says, I write to you. Okay, so he's writing to uh, someone. He said, I write to you who? To whom? Who believe on the name of the Son of God. So he's writing to this group of people who believe on the name of 
the son, name of the Son of God. Why is he writing? He said, I write unto you who believe on the name of the Son of God that you might know. Oh, he wants them to know something. Not hope. He wants them to know something. And so we continue. These things I write unto you who, who believe on the name of the Son of God. Why? That they might know. And then we continue. That you have eternal life. Now, I would assume that if anybody uh, on earth at that time knew what it meant to have eternal life, it would be the Apostle John. And he's writing to a group of people that truly believed, but it seems they did not know that through that faith in Jesus Christ, they had a gift, a gift unearned from God of eternal life. And we go to Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 where uh, the Apostle Paul, uh, again, a champion evangelist who knows whether a person is saved or not, uh, he said, it is by grace you have been saved through faith. Through what? Through faith. It's belief. You have been saved through faith. That's not of yourself. In other words, you didn't go, weren't good enough to earn it. Uh, you didn't merit it. Uh, who, uh, who, who believe on the name of the Son of God. These things that, that you, by grace, the goodness of God, you're saved through what? Through faith. That's not of yourselves. It's a gift, unearned, unmerited, uh, just a gift, no strings attached. It's a gift of God, and then it goes on to say, lest, uh, lest any man should boast. In other words, nobody can come to the place where we say, hey, I, I deserve this gift. I deserve this salvation. Look how good I am. Look how much money I give to the church. Look how often I attend the church. Look how good I treat the pastor. None of that really amounts to anything in terms of salvation. It is by grace you have been saved through faith. It's a gift, gift, G-I-F-T, gift of God. You so see, you just need to accept the gift. And so that's our mandate. Do you have any more, uh, Roy? Yes, uh, John 5, 24. The Gospel of John, chapter 5, verse 24. Jesus speaking here says, Verily, verily, say to you, he that heareth my word, number one, and number two, and believeth in him that sent me, has something. What do they have? A person who fulfills those two, first two requirements, has something, has eternal life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. You got any more, Roy? Yeah. How about the Philippian jailer when he asked the apostle Paul and some of his sirs, what must I do to be saved? The answer came quickly like the, the gavel of a judge on the uh, desk. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. So we have this mandate to uh, make it absolutely perfectly clear. Well, what about being good, Roy? Well, uh, I respond to this way <clears throat> and simply say, we are saved. Um, through faith in Jesus Christ, we are not saved by good works, but certainly we are saved unto good works. And once a person, the evangelist, has done his job, and a person comes through faith in Jesus Christ to a knowledge that they have received the gift of eternal life, then it's the job of the, of the church, really, to uh, do something that we call discipling them. The word discipling them as a verb is not found in scripture. Uh, a follower of Jesus Christ, a disciple is. But <clears throat> it's a job of the church to help them to mature, to grow up. Just like a parent has an infant child, good for nothing, can't do anything, causes problems, stinks up the house, as we your parents well know. But uh, absolutely a member of the family, 
we trust they grow up and they become a contributing member to the family and society and so on. And uh, uh, the same in the kingdom of God. So thanks for listening, dear friends. I see uh, many of you who are listening and uh, I thank you for listening. And may God bless you. And may we who have come to an assurance of Jesus Christ become cutting-edge evangelists. <clears throat> don't tell people what's wrong with their church if they don't happen to attend your church. Don't get into that. It's not about what church you attend. It's about in whom you believe. And don't let the Holy Spirit direct people. You're not the Holy Spirit. Do I need to remind you? And so pray for us as we continue our charge and we go to a church in um, the city of Lugos tomorrow morning, that's Sunday morning, and uh, have absolutely a mandate to teach this. And uh, I, I said, if you, if, if how to know you have eternal life. And we're going to go through this and uh, see what God does. God bless you. Signing off, this is your friend, Hooray. Till next time, I'll be back. Bye.